that your Visa debit card has been locked. To reactivate it, please press 1 now. Recorded robocalls like this are back. And this time, they're not just pretending to be from Visa or Westlaf Federal Credit Union, but also Barksdale, Bozier, and Carter Federal Credit Unions. And it's not just phone calls, but also texts and emails. But it appears the goal is still the same, to get your private information, to steal your identity, and then steal your money. The financial institutions just do not contact you by text message or, or emails or telephone to find out this information. Let's say you get off the phone only to realize you've just been tricked and you gave out information you really shouldn't have given out. It turns out there are things you can do to fight back, but you gotta do them quick. Call the financial institution that they thought that they were talking to and report this immediately. Hi, Brenda. Hi. This is Andy Fisher, and I've got Jeff uh, Farrell with me with uh, Channel 12. Here at the Better Business Bureau office, we spoke by conference call with Brenda, a local woman who told us that she just got a so-called phishing call on Tuesday. It was a recorded call that said my Westland Credit Union, I think it said credit card had been deactivated. That was a major red flag for Brenda since she doesn't even have such a Westla account. It asked her to push one or two for more information. So I pushed one because I wanted to talk to somebody and tell them I didn't have a Westland credit union card. But when another recording started to play, she just hung up. Fisher says if you get such a call, just hang up right away. I don't know what they were shooting, but it was ta 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 ta. Yes, and it was it was unbelievable. Latonya Brown quickly called 911 for help after shooters set a hail of bullets flying into her home and the vehicles belonging to her son and daughter parked right out front of her house. I'm not thinking they were talking to my house, but my son is friends with someone that they're into it with. And so I feel like they talking to my son's car and the, the bullets just end up hitting my house. But Brown says she believes her next door neighbor's house was a target. They have like 20, 20 holes in their house. All of these hits here, these are through, but they went to the side. Next door neighbor, Mary Johnson, says she won't soon forget the attack on her home. Oh, wow, like a war zone. <laughs> I, I, it just was a war zone. Johnson says that barrage of gunfire could be retaliation from young men in the neighborhood who have seen her grandson and Latanya Brown's son driving their cars in the area. They just don't like the idea that they got cars that they can ride in. Johnson says her grandson just happened to visit Thursday night before the gunfire broke out. One neighbor has a home surveillance video system that captured from a distance the entire thing. But he's too worried about his own safety to go on camera and didn't even want us to see the video for fear of retaliation. In fact, we were inside that neighbor's home when he handed over the memory card from the surveillance equipment that captured the shootings on Park Ridge Street. Just around the corner, in the 2900 block of Amherst Street, we found the home that was targeted by shooters hours after the shootings on Park Ridge. But no one here wanted to go on camera. And you said he's unconscious? Yes, he's unconscious. He, he doesn't have a pulse. And he's not We're breathing? Not no. It's now been three years since then four-year-old Sheldon S.J. Lewis became trapped underneath the kiddie ride at the Louisiana State Fair. Investigators later ruled the ride operator had walked away from the control box, left the ride on, and another child hit the start button. It has forever changed SJ's life. By the next year, new carnival operator, Crabtree Amusements, enacted strict new rules. That has to be energized, the key switch has to be turned on, and then you can function the ride and start it. And this key goes with the operator wherever he goes. But KSLA News 12 captured images of several workers breaking those rules. After we showed the carnival owner, new reminder stickers for workers were put on the control boxes. Come on. Oh, we can't do that, honey. Come on. But during our short visit on day one of this year's fair, we first noticed this small child opening the operator box with the key inside. Luckily, a dead man switch, foot pedal, was also in use, preventing the ride from starting this time. A short time later, we see the same employee return to the same box and turn the key still inside that box to start the ride. Then, at a second ride, we spotted the very same thing. 
Signs encourage the public to turn in workers who break operating rules. And that's exactly what we'll do after spotting these apparent rule violations. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12. We caught up with Paul Murray inside the Bossier City Walmart this morning, picking up two brand new bicycles for eight-year-old Colin Hall and his 10-year-old sister Kaya. Each one bikes for being the top readers at Midway Elementary back in December, only to have someone steal them Monday night. We were sitting there watching the, the news and saw your story. And my wife just looked at me and the little girl crying. She knows little girl's crying. I can't handle that. The little girl's crying and she looked at me and said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm, I'm going to make this right. So we left Walmart with the two bikes and went to deliver them to Colin and Kaya. That's Hi. Mr. Paul Hi. Murray. Yeah, yeah. And he has Don't something bite. for you guys. Okay. I saw you on TV last night. Okay. You broke my heart. <laughs> Not long after Paul handed the bikes to Colin and Kaya, Bossier City viewer Jennifer Netterville arrived, holding two bicycle locks. Some oh. heavy duty locks. So they like, won't get stolen yes. again. And they offer up to an $850 guarantee back for the bike if they do get stolen. Oh, well, that's awesome. Thank you. You're so Thank welcome. You. Well, your kids are great oh, kids. Yeah. And do this. Thank you. I know how to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> then another viewer. Jerry Bowman arrived. Miss Kaya, nice meeting you. Jerry bought two bicycle helmets for Colin and Kaya. I'm so proud of you. You stay in the school and doing a good job too, okay? Okay. Right. He's the eldest son of the late Joyce Bowman, who represented this district on both the city council and Caddo commission and just wanted to help the kids. And it turns out they knew the gifts were coming. I had read the thing on, on a web page on the internet. So you knew? Yes, sir. What do you think? I love it. One of the big reasons Kaya was so excited about the bike that she had earned as a top reader was that she didn't know how to ride a bike just yet. So we helped get her started a bit. Can we start going? Just pedal forward. Just go slow, okay? Get your brakes. Actually, Paul and Jerry gave Kaya her first riding lesson. Hey. Hey. All right. <laughs> That's the first step. That's all we need. Somebody was laying in the road. I thought maybe a child had passed out or got knocked down. That child turned out to be six-year-old Brendan Houston, who was struck by his school bus after just getting off. Neighbor Sarah Ward says neighbors later told her all the other kids had just run away after getting off the bus. But his shoelaces had been tied together. and. When he got off, you know, he was shuffling and he reached down in front of the bus to untie his shoelaces. She did not see him. After the accident, the bus driver, identified as Deborah K. Stevens, could be seen sitting on the grass. The bus driver was out here in the, right here next to my little bridge, just in hysterics, in hysterics. Shreveport police say Stevens was taken to the hospital for routine toxicology tests, but that impairment is not suspected. After talking with some of the neighbors who live in this area where the tragedy unfolded on Thursday, they describe a lot of people who speed along this part of North Highlands, but they never dreamed it would actually be a school bus that ended up causing a tragedy. I have a great grandson that's in the first grade at Herndon also, and he said that he played with the little boy yesterday at recess. In fact, we caught up with this woman on her way to Trinity Heights Baptist Church nearby where Brendan Houston's grandfather is an associate pastor and where the family is getting help and where Brendan is remembered fondly. He was very energetic, just a sweet little loving boy. That's a little twin sister. 